From the scorching desert to the high Sierra, today's Wild West saddles up for the Rock Creek Pack Station horse drive. Plus, you'll meet John Wayne's costumer. Yeah, I knew him well. The late Luster Bayless. And we'll take you where the buffalo roam on the estate of Hollywood's first cowboy movie star. Today's Wild West, up next. The Wild West. It's still out there. And we'll show you how to find it. This is today's Wild West. The Rock Creek Pack Station Spring Horse Drive. Four days in the saddle. Yes, definitely having fun already. <laughs> Driving a herd of horses and mules 100 miles. Through scorching desert heat. Choking clouds of dust. Long historic trails that'll end up high in California's spectacular Sierra Nevada mountains. Are you psyched up? Yes. This adventure begins where it ends, at the Rock Creek Pack Station, about 30 miles northwest of Bishop, California. Their group includes many who've been here before. It's, it's a ball. Yeah? Yeah. It's a really unique experience. Yeah, there's nothing else like it. We drop off our cars, hop in a van, and head down the mountain to our first night's camp far below at the pasture where the horses will drive have spent the winter. The solar rays come off the West Coast Ocean and relay on the White Mountains here. Really? Yeah, it's super spectacular. It's something I just learned the other day. No, you can't. It's a beautiful June evening for an outdoor dinner in the scenic Owens Valley. But we are warned tomorrow will be tough. It's supposed to be around 108 in shape, and there's no shape. Could be the most miserable afternoon of your life. It's fun. <laughs> But that doesn't phase Linda Wilson. It's like therapy you're out here in the wilderness. She's been coming on this ride for 32 years. When I go home, I have six kids and a husband, and this is the only thing I do that I get away from it all and enjoy the outdoors by myself. I don't have to do anything for anyone but myself. So that's therapy to me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh -huh. Next morning, the cool of the dawn and anticipation and excitement are in the air as we saddle up. <laughs> a little nervous. But this pleasant temperature won't last long. Oh, it's it's challenging out here, especially in the 160 degree heat. But here you are again. Yeah, that's because she's here again. So you psyched? Yes, I am. This trek has become an annual tradition for Wendy, daughter Eddie, and their friends Isla and Jazz, who they met on the ride a year ago. Well, you must like it, huh? Yes, very much. Being out here in nature, being with these beautiful um, animals, and then we've met wonderful people. Most people would probably think you're crazy. This fascinating and hearty group of adventurers includes hairstylists, nurses, attorneys, a federal judge, a park ranger, and others who choose to spend their vacation horseback in the desert heat. There's a saying that if I had to explain, you wouldn't understand. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I just leave it at that. If you make the first day and you're still alive, you usually make it after that. <laughs> Ivana Krohn leads the way, one of about half a dozen wranglers along for the ride. I think it's going really well. Thanks to you guys. Everyone's doing a great job. Another half dozen crew members move and set up camp while we're on the trail. All we have to do is sit back and enjoy the ride and the view which is spectacular. Oh, it's just so expansively beautiful in person. The mountainside, the grasses, every little detail of being here is just absolutely stunning. It's just kind of hard to capture it because it's just constantly changing. Linda Kessler has perhaps the most unusual career on this ride. She's a Hollywood stunt woman. Balls fight, horse stuff, fires, cars, motorcycles. She stays very busy working in big budget pictures. Number one thing in our business in general is know how to fall and fall safely. That's a skill you don't want to use horseback riding. Well, job one is keeping the horse between you and the ground. Hi, are you helping? A close second, drinking plenty of water. Two pack mules carry that precious liquid, more valuable than gold here in the desert. I said our savior, the water mule. Where the temperature soon tops 100, 
We take regular breaks to make sure everybody gets tanked up. You haven't had fun until you've been riding a horse for about, I don't know, eight hours and 110 degrees out in the Owens Valley Desert. But well, we are having a good time, thanks to plenty of water. How are you feeling? I feel good. I mean, you know, surprisingly good, considering it's as hot as it is and it's the day's long. But it's a lot of work, but it's a lot more fun. Cool. We're back on the dusty trail, a trail of dust that's like talcum powder. The hooves of the horses send up thick clouds of the stuff, and the animals disappear into the gritty fog. Much of our journey follows the old rail bed of the Slim Princess, the nickname of the old Southern Pacific Narrow Gauge Railroad that once ran here. Built in the 1800s, the trains quit running in 1960, and the tracks were pulled up. But along with the roadbed, other remnants remain, like an old abandoned depot. Narrow gauge went from the Owens Lake all the way up towards Bowie. As we ride this 19th century trail, we come across the 21st century, the Owens Valley Observatory, owned by Caltech, the California Institute of Technology. Known as the Owens Valley Ears, I'm told the dishes are indeed ears, listening to radio waves, the sun, and deep into space. It's day two, we've been in the saddle for three, four hours. Another hot, dusty day, not as hot, but okay. nothing's better than stopping for some water. This stuff's worth gold out here. I said, I used to think everybody on the horse drive had such white teeth, but it's just their faces are so dirty. <laughs> it's all worth the price of admission. Beautiful, beautiful. Lucky to be here. The Sierra Nevada to the west, the White Mountains to the east, and the Owens Valley. All a beautiful sight. For the lucky few that get to enjoy the view horseback. However, I will admit that night's camp was a welcome sight, where we'd get a shower, dinner, and a good night's sleep. How far are we going today? Long, long way. All the way. Just north of Bishop. Next morning, we're back in the saddle, and back in the dust, and enjoying the trail with new friends, which include the young Wranglers, living the dream. I went out to Jackson Hole. I was at Jackson Hole last summer, and Grand Canyon this winter, and now I'm here. Like Wyoming cowboy Cole Carey. Yeah, I just move around, sleep in my truck in between. A lot of us do that. It's a good life. I love this outfit. I've never worked for another. Anna's ridden for Rock Creek for 10 years. It's a family. Just Craig, you know, he runs a family business and he's not some distant boss that you never see. He's there for everything and you can talk to him about anything. Um, and he just, he really values us, I feel like. Craig London owns Rock Creek. A family emergency kept him from joining this year's horse drive, but his crew is happy to be here, like longtime Wrangler Mark Midget. All this open space, that's the biggest thing. You can pick any direction you want and go there when you're not trespassing. The West is still alive out here, huh? Yep, it is. Known by the Paiute Indians as the place of flowing water, the Owens Valley was once irrigated and productive agricultural land until the city of Los Angeles bought up most of it and took most of the water. In the so desert and all of a sudden in a creek. I know, that's how it is. That's how it goes out here. There's different opinions about that history, but what visitors find today in this ruggedly beautiful part of California is the wide open American West. And because it's largely undeveloped, its history, like the remnants of the Slim Princess, can still be plainly seen. This ride is a mix of both the old and new American West, like busy Highway 395. The California Highway Patrol stops traffic to escort us across, and we're soon back in the desert. All right, watch out! It's not pristine wilderness, but we are horseback in the west. You just gotta edit out the man-made stuff and enjoy the ride. It just is fun. It's just fun to be with all the people and um, who move the horses. 
Um, it's very enjoyable. I can still do this, and not probably too many 75-year-olds cook. You like Howdy? I love Howdy. He's a good animal. He knows exactly what to do. I didn't want a challenge, and now I don't have one. <laughs> a lot of work. It's hard. It's, it's not a pony ride. Let me put it that way. It's better, it's... You're better off if you have some experience with horses and have no fear of them or of loose horses and you have some confidence I guess is what it is. Fiddle and Pete and his buddies will be entertaining us at our campground that night where we'll find hot showers, hors d'oeuvres, and another spectacular dinner. Barbecue chicken, corn on the cob, we got broccoli salad, and wine rolls. <laughs> We're having a good time. The worst of the heat is behind us, and tomorrow we head for the high country. Right up there is Rock Creek. So we go up the hill, take a left, and we're home. Oh yeah, that's an easy way of putting it. Back in the day when you needed to get from the Owens Valley to the mountains, this was the road, and your horse was your ride. Unless you took a wagon. These are wagon rides, huh? Yeah, these are. Just imagine what a tough pull that must have been. This is the primary road between the upper elevation and the valley. This is how you got up to Shortwind Summit. Beautiful. All right, changes, I'll bet. They, all through the day, the light hits it different, and so it would look differently. It is spectacular and changes with every step we climb. As the day wears on, we're out of the valley and into the mountains and the pine trees. Lots of people wonder how the pioneers did it, but after a few days horseback, you start to figure it out. Your body gets accustomed to the rhythm of the saddle, sleeping on the ground, and the daily routine of life on the trail. It takes a few days to get into the groove, you know, get in the rhythm of what you're doing, and then now I could go for days. And now we're going into cool weather. I could do cool weather for a few more days, that's for sure. Our four-day adventure is flying by, at least most of the time. Yeah, at moments it didn't seem like it was ever going to end, but it was the hottest time that they've ever done this, and I'm just so proud that I made it as much as I did. It was, it's awesome. The switchback trail takes us higher and higher. Gorgeous, there's just so much to see. We'll spend the night at a ranch called Sky Meadow. We're in a different world. We've come to the promised land, people. The promised land is a little breezy that night, but calms down by morning, where we get ready for one last memorable ride Pretty awesome. on Wheeler Crest Trail. Nice office you guys got. Not bad. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that's beautiful. Nice place for lunch, huh? Yes, it's gorgeous. We'll take a break for lunch in a beautiful mountain meadow. <laughs> then we're back on the trail for the home stretch. To the pack station, the end where we began. It's been a tough ride, a beautiful ride, and an unforgettable ride in this unique part of the American West. Many of my new friends are already planning to ride back down the mountain this coming fall when the horses are driven back to their winter pasture. He hitchhiked to LA and became John Wayne's trusted costumer. Yeah, I knew him well. The amazing life of Luster Bayless, just ahead. And what do you remember about John Wayne? What kind of guy was he? I tell you, he was a straight shooter. And when he told you something, you could take it to the bank. He hitchhiked to Hollywood with $60 and became the trusted costumer and friend of John Wayne. Oh, you got an article on you. Yeah. Hollywood to Rueville. You've come a long way since you hitchhiked down here with what, 50? <laughs> right. Before he passed away in 2022, Luster Bayless gave us a tour of United American Costume, the amazing company he founded that's been costuming classic westerns and all kinds of other films since the 1970s. 
I didn't like to take too many pictures with it. I didn't do that too much. Buster worked on more than a dozen John Wayne films, including The Cowboys. The Duke, you know, threw them up against that tree and everything. And, you know, and then he, he went and then shot him in the shoulder and everything. And that was terrible. One of the few where Duke Wayne's character is killed. Lester was on the set that day. But it sounds like it was almost kind of real for you to watch him get shot in that movie, huh? Yeah. Oh. You weren't used to seeing him get killed in the Western. No, right? I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Mm -mm. Lester was 80 when we spent the day touring what is one of the biggest costume companies in Hollywood. Buildings the size of airplane hangars, stocked with meticulously you organized costumes of every description from the 1700s to the 1970s and beyond. That looks like Clint Eastwood right there. Yeah, that's right. That could be him. I did him one time. This all began back in 1959. Buster was just out of the Navy. A buddy told him to come to L.A. where he could get him a job with his uncle, Hollywood costumer Seth Banks. Yeah, he did to kill the Mockingbird, Seth Banks. We, I have his work box right over here. Bayless hitchhiked from Ruleville, Mississippi. And when he applied at Western yeah, Costume yeah, Company, yeah. he would not he take no yeah, for an answer. Right. He says, we heard that you were coming, but uh, we don't have an opening. I said, look, give me a job. Just, just give me a job. That's all I want is a job. And he says, mm. He scratched his head. He said, I'll tell you what, you come to work. Um, um, tomorrow morning, I, I was here, and that was it. This is his son. Fast forward a couple years, costumer Frank Beetson, who rented outfits from Western, was impressed by Lester's work ethic and gave him his big break, a job on McClintock, filmed at Old Tucson Studios in Arizona, where he first met John Wayne. Duke was impressed as well. I saw Duke again. He said, I want you to his kid. I want you to always do my movies. So from McClintock to the end of Duke's career, you worked on all his movies. Yeah. From then on, I did everything. I did everything to the end. And in the end, when Wayne was dying of cancer, he sent Luster this telegram. It says, Dear Lust, that's the best way to get them, Lust, from the folks you love, Duke. That's right before he died, huh? Yeah. Memorabilia from his John Wayne days is prominently displayed in Lester's office, including souvenir coffee mugs from all those movies. Duke even came over for dinner one night, much to the delight of Lester's two young daughters. We had dinner at my house one time. The two kids, boy, they were just thrilled. Later he called and sent some stuff there for, for Christmas. You knew him pretty well, huh? Yeah, I knew him well, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Good guy? Good guy. You, you, you can take his word and take it to any bank you want to. There's lots of memories here from those classic pictures like True Grit. True Grit. With the eye patch. Yeah. That's the hat he wore? Yeah. And the day when John Wayne forgot his eye patch. And Hathaway. Uh, what in the hell are you doing? Why, why? Director Henry Hathaway was not happy. Where is his eye patch? I took off running up the hill up the hill in uh, Colorado, and, uh, and I came back and I handed it to him, and I fell, and I, 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 my heart went down. You had a heart attack? Yeah. Couldn't have done it without you, Lester. Jim Ardess. The walls are filled with framed photos and notes of other Hollywood legends, like director Howard Hawks. He was a tough guy to work for, too, huh? Oh, yeah. He was a good guy, though. There's a note from Jane Fonda from Comes a Horseman, a photo with James Garner, and a picture and a note from James Arness, just to name a few. You're good buddies with Sam too, huh? Yeah, I talked to him about a week ago. One of Sam Elliott's distinctive cowboy hats and costumes is prominently displayed. Lester's collection also includes the hat James Arness wore as Marshal Dillon in Gunsmoke, the hat James Garner wore in Maverick, and perhaps the best known hats in any Western those worn by Robert Duvall and Tommy Lee Jones in Lonesome Dove. Amazing to get to see them. That's good hair. Lonesome Dove. 
Is that from Tom Horn? Yep. For Lester, costuming a character often starts with a hat. You gotta have a good hat. Start with the hat and go down. There's an amazing collection of headgear, and not just for cowboys. Look at this. This is a nice for an Indian. Look at that snow guy. That's a great looking hat. Yeah. The Bayless collection includes a vast array of Indian costumes. Buffalo headdresses, war bonnets. That's a chief. That's a good chief. And there's all the other authentic regalia it takes to bring the Old West back to life. It's real. It's real stuff. The real way. Yeah, I like them aged down a little bit. See? Darker. Darker. Yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 See? So they look real. Yeah, they're real. They are real. <laughs> look, chokers. Yeah. Make those with Sam. Sam yeah, probably. Sam wore those? Yeah. Chaps for cowboys. And dusters for outlaws. That was a fun. Yeah. Got to have a duster for a Western movie, huh? You got to have. All with one guiding principle. So it's all very authentic. Yeah, it's got to be. You got to be real. There we go. You want to do a Western, this is the place, huh? <laughs> yeah. This vast collection, of course, includes much more than cowboys and Indians. Whether it's the Revolutionary War, World War II, wow. or peacetime. That's a nice pair of coat. Beautiful. You'll find it here, from head to toe, boys and girls. I have kids. And if they don't own it, United Americans' expert wow. crew can make it, like this that. beautiful brand new gown. Yes, it's very fun, and it's there's something new every day. Yeah, hey, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, so Lester's yeah. been a dear, dear friend of mine for over 23 years, That's and right. he's the best in the business. He's put together a really, really beautiful company. Quite a story. Lester's company lives on today, as do all those movies and those cherished Westerns that his costumes brought to life. Let's make you feel proud about all you've accomplished. Yeah. He'll be here for a long time. He'll be here. Think about it. Don't think about it. Up next, the buffalo that wander the former yeah, estate of Hollywood's first cowboy movie star. He's got some crazy eyes. Yeah, <laughs> Come and get it. She's the most tame. Just minutes off a busy Los Angeles area freeway, roam a remnant of the Old West. He's a big dude. It's breakfast time for a dozen American bison, better known as Buffalo, that roam the rugged canyon land at William S. Hart Park in Santa Clarita, California. So we have lots of different personalities here. Park animal keeper Rachel Kumalainen. Again, they are wild animals. Is in charge of the daily morning feeding of two sterilized bulls and 10 females. She's kind of a pest. Some of which are very friendly. Watashni. You know, she's right there. She's like, oh, here I am, here I am. I want treats, give me treats, you know, and right in your face. I've had her stick her whole head in my window. Number 49, who don't enjoys ramming it. the feed truck, is not. Yeah, don't you even think about it. <laughs> you can see it in her eyes. She's... Yeah, she's got some crazy eyes. Rachel's worked with all kinds of animals during her career. Every kind of large cat to wolves, um, a little bit with primates, birds of prey, reptiles. So I, I've been in kind of the animal world for a long time and I know what I can and cannot get away with. And has managed this herd for nine years. Now what I can do is not what someone else can do because it's really about reading animal behavior. Buffalo will tell you what they're thinking. When a bison is really upset, their tail will go straight up like a flag. They make certain noises. They definitely have a snorting noise that they make. But they're pretty mellow today. A small herd of the massive animals have wandered a three canyon, 23 acre fenced off section of the park ever since Walt Disney personally donated the original eight back in 1962. Bison he'd been using to make movies and TV shows. All but three are descendants of the original herd. Hart Park is a fitting home for these living symbols of the American West. Riding his beloved paint horse Fritz, William S. Hart was America's first cowboy movie star. He made about 70 films during the silent movie era. When he died, he donated his hilltop mansion and his 265 acre ranch to Los Angeles County as a park. Along with the buffalo, 
Rachel feeds a menagerie of other animals that live here. Ducks, geese, swans, two sulcata tortoises, and five alpacas. So they like to kick the hay out of the trough and eat it off the ground. Yeah, because it's natural for them. Buffalo are the stars of the park, and they have a sweet tooth. They like cabbage, but they love broccoli, zucchini, and especially pumpkins. We actually have to smash them open, though. They're not able to open the pumpkin themselves. So we smash them open, and then we throw the chunks, and they just go crazy. They'll eat every single piece of a pumpkin. It's kind of crazy to watch. You can get up close and personal with the bison. There's a hiking trail that circles the park that'll take you right by where the buffalo have breakfast. And if you like, you can even volunteer to help feed them. We take volunteers ages 14 and older. So anyone that loves animals, this is a really unique opportunity. Quite a way to kick off the morning. Having breakfast with the buffalo in the backyard of America's first cowboy movie star, whose home is usually open for tours, but that's another story. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedore. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in today's Wild West, or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com. Funding for today's Wild West provided by the Leggett Foundation.